Now, like many others, I spent years and years waiting for a live action version of Sandman. The graphic novel is something that's always been close to my heart, and just after I finished uni, I ended up getting a minimum wage job in a shop, working about 30 hours a week. This gave me about £800 a month, and after bills and food came out, I was left with a little bit to spend on comics. Now at the time, DC was slowly in the process of rolling out their gigantic Sandman omnibuses. These came in at about £80 each, which was a lot of money for me at the time. However, I saved and saved and saved up for them, and eventually bought the first volume. I burned through it in the space of a weekend, and even though I'd had the work hyped up to me quite a lot, I was still completely blown away by it. I then saved up and bought the second volume, and the book just seemed to get better and better. Now sadly, at the time, due to my money issues, I had to sell both books, but they've always held a special place next to my heart, and every time I hear about Sandman, I think back to those days of when I was living week to week, enjoying the simple things in life. Hearing that Netflix was adapting a live action version of the comic really piqued my interest, and in case you don't know, bringing it to the screen has been a massive endeavour for the creators. If you listen to the podcast Best Movies Never Made, then you'll know they did a big breakdown of the original script, and it's clear there's been several people trying to get this off the ground. Initially pitched as a movie, it's now a 10 episode TV show that stays very faithful to the comics. Nowhere is this seen more than in episode 6, which adapts The Sound of Her Wings and also Doll's House Part 4. These are two of the best issues in the entire run, and the reason that Netflix put them together is because they both study life and death. In the first part of the entry, we watch as Dream joins his sister Death, as she goes about her daily routine of meeting people after they pass away. The second part follows Morpheus as he meets a man who's been granted immortality on the same date every 100 years. Now the first of these always struck a chord with me when I was reading it. Death is something that we must all face and it's still a subject that we know very little about. People spend their entire lives living with faith or in the absence of it and we all have our own thoughts and beliefs on what will be waiting for us. Even with the idea of the afterlife, it's rare that death is ever welcomed and many of us hate to think about it because of the anxiety it brings. However, the comic and episode show us that it's just another part of life that we all have to go through. Now why Gaiman broke the mould is because he completely reinvented the personification of death. Gone was the classic depiction of the Grim Reaper, and here we met a young friendly character that was based on Cinnamon Hadley. She came across in an unassuming manner and barely made an entrance with her and Dream simply sitting down together and talking. It's the perfect way to introduce the character, and it's brought across to the episode expertly when we catch the pair in a park together. One section that always stuck out to me in the comics was when Death would tell people that their time was up and they desperately begged for more. She then informed them that they got the same as everyone else, they got a lifetime. It's a line that's always stuck out to me and whenever I've heard of people passing away, it's something I've remembered. Whether the characters she comes across are young, old or in the prime of their lives, they all got a lifetime. Now, though this line doesn't get brought up in the episode itself, it's clearly brought across thematically. Here we watch Death and Morpheus go on a beat for beat retread of the journey that they did in the source material. First she catches a boy's football who's not really looking too deeply into his surroundings, then they go to an old man with a violin before journeying to a baby. As someone who's just had kids, this scene hits me even harder now and I can't imagine how devastating it would be for something like this to happen to a parent. It truly shows how tragic that death could be and how it affects everyone around us. However, whilst that would normally be depressing, what the episode is really telling us is how precious and short that life is. You can be out with a person you love one day and in the next moment end up dying through no real fault of your own. It's really heartbreaking stuff, but in the end it's just a process of the universe that we're all part of. Although some of the deaths feel like they have no purpose, the true meaning behind everything is to find something that we loved living for. There's a great shot after the violinist dies where Dream stares at a photo of him in his quartet and it showcases some of the happiest moments in his life. It's very bittersweet and almost like a final swan song for the character before he goes on in the next stage of life. Now watching characters beg to let their wife know one last thing is really heartbreaking and yeah, it shows how devastating that loss can be. I think I cried like 10 times, well, well there was some dust in the room to be fair, but yeah, every single one of the deaths felt impactful. What the comic and episode do perfectly is that they make you contemplate your own life and death and it makes you introspectively think about all the things that matter. We all die one day, and this is an excellent way to show things from the perspective of a character who's been tasked with taking us to the great beyond. Like Dream, Death thought about leaving her post because she couldn't keep doing this due to how devastating it was. However, much like the people whose lives we see snuffed out, she found some form of purpose and also enjoyment. Death decided to give them a kind word and a friendly face, 
and she saw the other side of her existence and how to make the most of it. Seeing the pair go on their journey as they take the dead is beautiful, and it reminds us of what death is really about. Now this is mirrored by the second part of the entry, which follows death and dream as they grant immortality to a stranger. Though this is part of the dollhouse storyline, it's titled Men of Good Fortune, and it centers around Hob. He lives in the 1300s, a century filled with the Black Death, where you are lucky to live past 35. He believes that no one needs to die, and that we do because we have it ingrained into us that this is the way of the world. Being a pessimist, Dream believes that he will beg for death, but Hob defies all expectations, and through all the highs and lows, he still wants to stay alive. This is a character that truly goes on a roller coaster ride, and he shows all the ups and downs of life. Hob is a complicated character that becomes fixated on his fortune to the point that when he loses it, it leaves him completely broken. What Hob truly represents to me though, is how far humanity has come, and all the ups and downs that have been a part of it. He truly is a history lesson that gets involved in the printing press, sees William Shakespeare, and a lot more. Now I love the way that we also see the overall emotion of humanity repeat through the ages. There's calls for revolution, people working on the doll, and us just telling jokes. Now though we are the same at our very core, Hob also showcases the potential that we have. We are a very complicated species with a past that's often shied away from, but in order to understand what it truly means to be human, we have to shine light on the darkness. Hob also faces the same losses that we do too, and being an immortal means he sees death firsthand, and also faces the ruin of his business. However, he still bounces back, and he very much represents Dream's need to find companionship with humanity. Robert calls him lonely, which is very much a characteristic that he struggles with throughout the entire run. Like Hob, he's an immortal who only ever really interacts with others when they go to the dream world, and having been betrayed by humanity in the past, he struggles to trust others. This has pushed him away, and he believes that he's better off alone. However, Hob states that like all of us, he needs a connection. Though initially Dream protests against this and denies that he could ever be friends with a mortal, he ends up returning at the end to continue their conversation. Dream was trapped for so long that it made him truly re-examine what things meant to him, and he realised that he and Hob had a friendship that many would never understand. We as people can often be like this as well, where we push others away from us, who often mean the most, but this shows that there is a way to mend friendships if one acts with openness and also kindness. I love Hobbs saying that people are always better than you think they are, and it shows that we have the potential within us for greatness. Watching the pair meet for the final time also cements how far we've all come, and it makes you think of what's coming for the future. Really makes me wish I could see them meeting 100 years from now, and Hobb truly makes us wonder what it would be like to live forever. Coupled together, these two parts are perfect summations of life and death, with us seeing through all the characters what it truly means to be human. It's definitely my favourite episode in the series, and it perfectly recaptures the comic that I fell in love with in my other life. I hope you had fun with us talking about why we enjoyed it so much, and I'd of course love to hear your comments below on exactly what you think. We are running a competition right now and giving away 3 copies of Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness on the 15th of August, and all you have to do to be on the chance of winning is like the video, make sure you subscribe with notifications on, and drop a comment below with your thoughts on the episode. We pick the comments at random on the 15th and the winners of the last one are on screen right now. If that's you, then message me on Twitter at Heavy Spoilers. If you want something else to watch, then make sure you check out our breakdown of the series, which will be linked on screen right now. We go over all the easter eggs in it, explain the ending, and also just talk about our general thoughts on it. Hope to see you over there right after this, and if not, thanks for sitting through the video. You take care of yourself, and I'll see you in 100 years time. Peace.